Today, I want to help you learn English with a story about a fight between my brother and me. Welcome to English Coach 3 T's. I'm Tanya, and let me tell you, this fight was a doozy. When we say that a fight was a doozy, we mean it was a really bad fight or a really big fight. And the reason I remember this fight as a doozy is because of the way it ended up, which I'm going to tell you about here as I get to the story. So this took place back in the 70s, I would say, when my younger brother and I lived in a very small house with my dad and my stepmother. And they went out to some kind of event one night. And my brother and I were in age where we could be left at the house for a few hours and be trusted to take care of ourselves most of the time. <laughs> and we did take care of ourselves, but we got into a big argument. To be honest with you, I don't even remember what the argument was about. And now that I know more about remembering, because we like to talk a lot about how we can remember vocabulary, other things we're learning in a language, I know that memory is linked to emotion. It can be a positive emotion or a negative emotion. Either way, if it's a strong emotion, we're going to remember that. Learning English is about so much more than grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. And I want to help you with my free class for women who have an intermediate to advanced level of English and want to become more fluent with my three secrets to becoming more fluent without wasting time and without doing things that don't work. In this class, I'm going to share with you some tools you can start using right away to work on your fluency. If you'd like to sign up for free, click the link in the description below where you'll find all the information you need to register. So whatever we were in a fight about was not linked to a very strong emotion. I guess I thought it was strong at the time, strong enough to have an argument about, but what happened during the argument left a very long and lasting memory with me because it was a very strong emotion. In this case, very scared. I was very scared and I'll tell you why. So Joe and I started this argument. I don't remember why we were, I do remember running around this house, which wasn't very big, very upset at each other, yelling and screaming. There was maybe some slapping. This is slapping, maybe. I don't remember much slapping maybe even some scratching, not a lot of physical fighting because mostly we were just running and grabbing at each other and angry and upset. Finally, I ran outside and he ran outside and chased me for a while and then he ran back into the house and locked the door. Yeah, he locked me out. It's not funny. I mean, it wasn't funny. It's funny now because we had what we would call a screen door. So I don't have a screen door now on either of my doors, or I would show you what it is, but I will show you a screen is something that you put on a window or a door to keep the bugs out. This particular door did have a screen, but it had a like a lightweight window that went up and down on the screen door and so it really was a glass door more than a screen door the reason this is important is because i was knocking on the door and shaking the handle joe let me in let me in and he was very proud of himself now i think it might be important to tell you this was my younger brother he was a, was is a little more than three years younger than me i was the big sister and at this time quite a bit bigger than him He's now quite a bit taller than me. Um, and he was standing inside of the locked door. I could see him because this was a glass door. And he was looking with his arms crossed like this because I couldn't get to him. And I was so mad and I was 
knocking on the door, Joe, I'm going to tell on you, you're going to be in trouble. All those things that children do when there's sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry is when brothers and sisters argue about different things. And finally, as I am really getting upset and scared, not the scared I was talking about yet, but scared because now I'm outside, locked outside, and I have no idea what's going to happen. It's getting dark. It's nighttime. And I am like, oh, what's going to happen? So I'm knocking and knocking, and pretty soon I start pounding. So this is like knocking on a door. This is like pounding on the door. I'm pounding on the door and screaming, Joe, let me in. Unlock the door. You're in so much trouble, and I'm pounding and I'm pounding. And the glass broke. And there was a total silence and two kids like, oh, because it dawned on us. In other words, we realized, we knew in that moment, we are both going to be in so much trouble. Now, a little aside here, meaning a little bit of information on the side. My dad was not the kind of person we would get a lot in a lot of trouble with, but my mom and her whole side of the family, we would have been in huge trouble. So we didn't really know that we weren't going to be in that much trouble, but we were scared. Now, this is when I was really scared. As the oldest child, I would be expected to take care of the younger child and make sure things like this didn't happen. And I just broke the window and almost immediately started blaming it on him because he had locked the door. However, he didn't break the window, but I remember I wasn't conscious at the time of thinking this. I remember thinking, okay, we're in this together. I don't know what he thought. In fact, of course, you're only getting my side of the story. I'll have to ask him what his side of the story is. But the funny part of the story is we're both sitting there like, oh my God, we're in so much trouble. And Joe reached over and unlocked the door and opened it for me. And the reason that's so funny is that, of course, now that the door was broken, I could unlock it and let myself in. <sighs> After that, I don't think either of us had any idea what we were fighting about. And our only thought was, what are we going to do? Now, remember, there's no cell phones at this time. It's not like we could call our parents or ask them what to do about this door. So we started cleaning up the glass. We cleaned up everything, you know, threw it in the trash and everything. And our idea was, this is so sweet to me now, but I remember at the time thinking this was a good solution. As an adult now, I see, oh, how scared we were. So we got all of our money together, which at this time in our lives was not much. I remember it was a lot of coins like quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies, and maybe one or two dollar bills. We had piggy banks that we kept our money in and we emptied them onto the table and made this little pile of money thinking that we would pay for the door to be fixed. I'm sure it was not even close to enough money to fix the door. And we wrote a note that said how sorry we were and that we were gonna pay for the door and you know, blah, 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 whatever. And we both signed it and we immediately went to bed. <laughs> now, this was early in the evening. There was really no need for us to go to bed, but this is what we thought would be a good thing. As I said earlier, this was a very, very small house, a one bedroom house. Joe and I did not have bedrooms for ourselves. And my dad had built two platforms in the what would have been the dining room. A platform is just a raised flat space, a lot like a stage, but these platforms were up high enough that we could get under them, maybe not stand up, but we could go under and we had kind of a little space for ourselves under the platforms. 
And so we were both up in our platform in bed waiting for my dad and my stepmom to come home. And I remember it seemed like forever before they came home. When they finally did come home, I remember them right away noticing, oh my gosh, the door is broken and I wonder what happened and oh my goodness. And again, as an adult, I can imagine them thinking, oh my God, are the kids okay? And blah, blah, blah. Probably not caring about the door at all wondering if we were safe, but in our mind, we're thinking, they are going to be totally upset about the door, which of course also wasn't good. And then there's this pile of money on the table there. And I remember them walking over and talking about it and reading the note. And my dad, thankfully, very gently, very calmly in a very peaceful way, coming over to the platforms where we were pretending to be asleep, like <laughs> obviously not asleep, and just saying something, I don't even remember his exact words, other than the feeling, again, memory is linked to feeling, the feeling that I was very safe, that I had made a mistake, and that it was going to be okay and that we would work it out and we didn't have to work it out right this second. I share this story with you because it it's funny. It's a story we still love to tell. Um, but because I learned so many things from this and what I want to share with you, partly what I already did about memory, but also about communication. I recently made a video about the conflict between the Native Americans and the European Americans and how communication played a role in that. If you want to see that video, you can check it out at the link above. Communication is such a huge, important part of our lives, our relationships, whether they're business relationships, family, friends. And when we're learning another language, learning to communicate in another language is a lot. And I just want to take a minute to remind you that this is a huge thing. Even if you're trying to communicate in your own native language, if everyone understands the native language, it's still difficult to communicate. So maybe you can cut yourself a break when trying to communicate in your second or third or fourth language. We say we will cut yourself a break or cut someone else a break when we mean be gentle, be easy, be peaceful about it. Maybe we also could say give yourself a break, just have some understanding. And then the other thing is how my dad role modeled being peaceful and how important I think this is at any time in history, definitely at this time in history. And what can we learn from that? I know that I was very fortunate to have this experience. I didn't know I was fortunate until I became an adult, actually quite a ways into my adult life. And I share this with you because I too have needed to learn how to have peaceful interaction with people who have maybe made a big mistake or a small mistake, who may have done something that cost money or has caused a big problem. Because when we have a more peaceful life, I'll speak for myself, when my life is more peaceful, and has less stress, it is much easier for me to learn anything. Now that part I can say has been proven. We learn better when we are not feeling stress. I think that is relatively easy to believe. And so one of the things that I do, I do this to help my students as well, is how can we 
create less stress in our lives? How can we create a learning environment that's conducive to learning, meaning that it is a good learning environment? I hope that if nothing else, this story was entertaining and maybe made you chuckle. A chuckle is a little laugh because any time that we are listening to stories, the news, articles, whatever it is, in a way that we can understand most of what is being said, we are increasing our fluency. And if you want to continue increasing your fluency, I suggest you try this video next and I'll see you there.